I'm Dr. Burt Blinn. I'm with the University of Arkansas Department of Plant Pathology. I'm an associate professor. Our research is really focused on the molecular level uh, interactions between plant pathogens and their hosts. So in soybean, we're very interested in the interactions between the fungi that cause frog eye leaf spot, cercospora leaf blight, and other soybean diseases, and how soybean responds to these organisms. The reason we're interested in this is because if we can understand what genes are involved in these interactions, we can target these genes and develop new sources of genetic resistance. We look at the molecular level of how the fungus, how a pathogen interacts with the plant. And so this involves some, some imaging and screening technologies that are, that are quite new. And uh, it gives us a very accurate uh, picture of how the fungus is interacting with the plant. When we have this information, then in a greenhouse setting, as we generate transgenic plants, as we're, we're testing uh, transgenes to see in the early stages if they're uh, effective, a lot of this work is conducted in a greenhouse setting where we inoculate plants and then evaluate resistance responses. And so obviously what we're hoping to get is to improve resistance in, in a manner that's, that's very, very clear. And uh, even though a greenhouse setting isn't quite as, as uh, accurate as maybe some field conditions, we can still get a very clear idea if we're on the right track. We believe that genetic resistance is the front line of defense uh, for a variety of reasons in soybean against a wide variety of diseases. The advantages of genetic resistance in soybean, uh, it certainly decreases input costs and it also uh, provides a degree of yield stability. So uncertainty, disease is cyclical. So some years, maybe a few years in a row, don't see too much disease. One year conditions are favorable. Disease is a major problem. And genetic resistance, by consistently offering protection against diseases, really helps to stabilize production. But the pipeline is always geared towards making sure those results uh, are implemented in field conditions. And so that's, you know, benefiting growers is really the name of the game for why we're in this, this line of work. So the, uh, the support from the, uh, from the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board is really crucial to our program. It enables us to uh, make our discoveries and, and continue our research, but it also allows us to network and interface with groups from all over the world. So we're not working in a vacuum. We have the support to work with groups and, and really uh, have a cutting edge approach to getting all the information that's out there integrate that into our program, and then hopefully make discoveries as efficiently as possible. Uh, the type of work that we're doing isn't being done anywhere else in the world to the best of our knowledge. So the approaches that we're utilizing to try to augment genetic resistance are very new. Uh, they've been demonstrated to work in some systems, but we're taking this into soybean. And so the support from the Arkansas Board allows us to do this at a time when very few other groups are able to do this sort of work. And you know, this is a very powerful thing for the, for the state and, and for research in general.